Good hey, morning. good morning. It's Friday. Yes, it is. Yay. Yay. We like Fridays. I was going to say, you like Fridays. Friday is my favorite day. Friday is your favorite day. Yes. How was your workout? Workout was okay. Not bad. You know? Um, did legs. Did everything I needed to do. And then wanted to go home. And bizarrely, he was done before I was. Yes, I was. I did um, back and buys today. And the gym is ridiculously busy. Yeah. Um, because the Western Y is closed, and so all the people from that facility are uh, using our facility right now. And yeah, it was very, yeah. very busy. It was been that way all week. Yeah. Yeah. So. so, but hopefully it'll be better next week because the Western Y is going to open back up. Good. What are you having for breakfast? Can you guess? <laughs> oatmeal. Always oatmeal. I'm having oatmeal as well, and I'm having it with fruit in it today. As you know, I've been um, getting a little bored with it, so. The fruit and nuts and seeds that we have been, that Russ always does, I have been kind of playing with, and I have been doing some hummus and eating quinoa and mm -hmm. doing different things, but today I'm gonna go back to oatmeal. I have reduced my oatmeal serving from half a cup to a third of a cup, because like I mentioned to you, in the summertime, I just don't need as much food. Right. And I think, and this is me making stuff up, I have not you know, done research and science on this, but I do know that um, adult humans do use, obviously, their brown fat cells to create body heat. And when it's 90 degrees outside, your body is not creating body heat. No. So I think that I make up, that's why I don't uh, eat as much ca any, as many calories in the summertime. Yeah, I still eat. Yeah, you still eat the same yeah. amount. doesn't matter. Yeah. You like to eat. I do. So um, this week we've been talking about prostate cancer and your diet and how your diet can increase or decrease your risk of prostate cancer if you're a man, obviously. Obviously. Because uh, if you're a woman, you don't have that particular function, that That's organ. Right. Um, so I wanted to do a week in review, give you some, uh, give you some information in case you missed it. Um, I told you on Monday that the first concern about diet and prostate cancer started after... World War II, when they noticed, um, with the Japanese men population, they noticed a sevenfold increase. Nope, sorry, I'm reading it wrong. Let me make sure I read it wrong. They noticed a 25-fold increase of prostate cancer in Japanese men, and that they noticed that coincided with a sevenfold increase of egg consumption, a ninefold increase of meat consumption, and a 20-fold increase of dairy consumption. And so, good morning, Melissa. It's good, good to see you. So that was the first kind of, oh, maybe diet has something to do with prostate cancer. Because they noticed before that, that um, American men had more prostate cancer than they did in, in China and Japan and that kind of place. But they didn't really know why. Um, and then after World War II, when they noticed, oh, if they change their diet, they start getting the same disease as we do. And so then they, they realized that the growth hormone in the bovine growth hormone in dairy is part of the problem and we've told you before that milk is designed to take a 100 pound calf and turn it into a 400 pound cow very quickly say, in a very short period of time very short period of time <clears throat> um, in, in about six months maybe a little less and so you know if you add that kind of growth factor to humans that is going to create a problem Yes. And so we talked, I'm going to jump over to um, what we talked about on Thursday, which was IGF-1, which is the human growth factor um, that has, when you're a teenager, that's actually pretty high in humans because your body is growing. Right. You mm -hmm. need to uh, create more cells than you're killing off. As adults, we kill off about 50 billion cells a day and we create about 50 billion cells a day. <laughs> and whatever your nutrition intake <coughs> is, um, that's what your body uses to create those cells. So if your nutrition intake is horrible, then those cells get built with horrible nutrition. Are you okay? Yeah, I just had to cough. Didn't want, okay. to, do it. Didn't want to do it on camera. Okay. We don't have a cough button, so. Well, if you turned it a cough button on, then they, they wouldn't, wouldn't hear, hear me, yeah. and that would be a problem. Right, so. Um, so you don't want your IGF-1 high as an adult because that means what ends up happening is you don't kill off as many cells as you build, and then that's what leads to tumors, it's particularly tumors that can turn into cancer. Right. So obviously you don't want that to happen. And um, the other thing too is that now they do inject, you know, so most milk comes from pregnant cows, so it has all of those hormones in it. Then they inject the cows with additional hormones to help them create more milk because um, the average cow generally on its own will create about a gallon of milk a day. That's about how much milk a calf needs. But now Holsteins, which is the black and white cows that produce milk, they produce about six gallons of milk a day. Thank you humans for uh, right. you know, increasing Engineering. that. Engineering at yeah, its best. Yeah, exactly. So, and, so th that doesn't do you any favors. And we also mentioned that you know, drinking milk does not increase 
um, sorry, decrease your risk of hip fractures that, you know, the, the whole idea that the calcium in milk is right. necessary. It's a myth. Doesn't seem to be, doesn't hold up in, in the lab at all. So then we talked about the two things that are probably the highest risk for prostate cancer that you can put in your diet, and that's eggs and poultry. So if you're eating eggs or uh, chicken or turkey or, you know, whatever poultry, that's going to increase your risk. Um, Harvard University did a study that um, found that those are not good things. If you have as much as, let's see, if you eat less than even a single egg a day, it get, increases your risk of prostate cancer progression by two times. Right. So we, we told you the difference between ha, um, getting prostate cancer cells, which are the little foci, which is that you know, the cell doesn't replicate correctly, and then your body says, oh, that didn't work, and it kind of stops it, and you end up with a little foci spot. And 50% of men have that by age 50, 80% by age 80. And that, that's kind of normal, like that, yep, the body creates those little things and then says, oh, wait, that didn't work. What you want your body to do is stop those and just have them sit there. Um, eggs and poultry make those little cells not stop and then you end up with cancer because right. you end up, they, they grow. So um, if you want to avoid prostate cancer, avoiding eggs and poultry are gonna you know, do you a lot of favors. Funny thing about that is and for the longest time, I think people believed that poultry was the um, better option. You know? I think people still believe I that. I think people still believe it. And it turns out it's really not any better. And it might even be worse, depending on what your situation is, than, than other animal products. So. Yeah, I mean, animal products in general are not good. Um, but we've talked about cheese and eggs are probably the top two bad things. And then followed very, very closely by all um, animal flesh, right. including fish. So... Um, then there was a study that UCLA did that compared three groups of men, a plant-based and exercise group, an exercise-only group, and a controlled group of sedentary people eating standard fare. So I have the poor sedentary people eating standard fare. They didn't really stand a chance. No, I mean, because they already were heading down a bad road and just stayed there. Right. So if you're sedentary and eat standard, the standard American diet, your body can kill off 1% to 2% of cancer cells. If you exercise strenuously, and that's more, probably more exercise than I get, um, every weekday for 15 years, you'll be able to kill 200% more cancer cells. So exercise absolutely is a good thing. Definitely do your exercise. But if you uh, exercise and that you eat a plant-based diet, then you can 4,000% uh, more than people eating the standard American diet who don't exercise. Which so. goes to, I mean, that, that just stands to reason that if you are currently have symptoms, whether it's PBH or whether it's um, a form of actual prostate cancer, that exercising and going to a whole food plant-based lifestyle is gonna, you know, greatly improve your life. Right, and we talked about how um, having PBH or cancer uh, cancer. Good morning, Trish. Hey, Trish. Can be helped by um, adding cruciferous vegetables. That was something that they were like, yep, definitely eat cruciferous vegetables, which those are your crun really crunchy things like broccoli and cauliflower and kale. I need a sip of your water. Okay. Sorry, my throat was getting scratchy. All right, so add cruciferous vegetables. Those are really good. The other thing that they talked about was flaxseed. That mm. flaxseed is a really, really good thing to add. Now, we did tell you that it's a lot of flaxseed. They're talking like three tablespoons right. a day. That's a lot of flaxseed. And we typically have about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit greater than a tablespoon a day. Yeah, that's usually what we put in our oatmeal. So obviously, you are you know, if, if you really want all of the benefits of flaxseed, you need to eat quite a bit of it. And you can put it in anything. Uh, just make sure you grind it. If you're, mm -hmm. if you're buying the seeds whole, make sure you grind them because otherwise you don't get the benefit. They pass right through your body. Your body can't break the shell. Um, and put it, you can, I put them in... You know, you can tomato, pay, tomato sauces, and you yes. can put them in anything. You can put them in anything, and they don't drastically change the taste of anything. They don't really have a right. strong you know, flavor. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and then I told you about a study that they did where they looked at five, nearly 5,000 people, and they found an increase of animal protein consumption of just 1% is associated with a 15% increase of bladder cancer. Hmm. So... Um, cancer in general, I think, really likes animal products yes. is what we're learning. That's what we're um, learning. And you probably shouldn't, uh, shouldn't do that. We talked about enlarged prostate and that eating plants helps with that as well, can actually reduce the, si the size of it. And then, you know, yesterday we also mentioned the IGF-1, which we've talked about pretty extensively as far as animal products raising your IGF-1. Right. So basically the bottom line is that um, 
if you eat, if you want to, if you want to reduce your risk or the risk of someone you love of getting prostate cancer, you need to eliminate the eggs and the poultry. That that that's first off needs to yeah, like go no away that's because the first thing. everything, all the science that I'm seeing says that that is not doing you any favors. And then secondly, you need to be adding cruciferous vegetables, flaxseed, and there's another thing in here that says um, onions and garlics are. Uh, are associated with a significantly lower risk of BPH, which is the enlarged prostate that is. Well, I'm covered because all that stuff we eat, so. Yay! I'm going good. That makes me happy. Um, and of course, your legumes, your beans, your chickpeas, your split peas, your lentils. So, as we always tell you, if you're eating a variety of plants and you're limit, you're limiting or eliminating the animal-based products from your diet, you're going to give your body its best chance to be healthy. Now, does that mean that? Um, if your doctor tells you that you have cancer, that you should just say, no, I'm going to, you know, go. No. no, listen to your doctor. That's a smart thing to do. Right. Um, it does mean that if you are one of those people where they say well, they're, they're going to do watchful waiting, which is very, very prevalent in prostate cancer. If you change your diet, you are very likely to be able to reverse um, your, your issues with prostate, at least based on everything that I'm reading. Exactly. So did I miss anything that we told them this week that we need to tell them so. review? No, because every time I thought about it, I'll make sure you say this. You said like the next sentence. I'm like, sorry. I thought I had something. Oh. So no, you covered it all. You did a good job, as always. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Um, we did have someone ask us if we could do breast cancer. So we may I think we're gonna do breast cancer next next week. Um, I'm pretty confident we're gonna tell you exactly the same thing. Don't eat animals, eat plants. Yeah. <laughs> well, but the good thing is within this these conversations or this information that we're sharing, there are Absolutely, there are definitely specific foods and food groups that help yeah. certain types of ailments. That's true. So covering them separately like this, is, I think, is still good. Yeah. I'm, I'm and this, we're, we're going from this book, How Not to Die, which is by Dr. Greger. He also has a cookbook out called How Not to Die Cookbook. And it is one of the few cookbooks that I have that I really find a lot of recipes in it where I'm like, oh, I know what all these ingredients are, and I feel like I can make this really right. easy. Now, he's a very big... Um, I can't help you because I have no idea what you want to say. The soup, the, the um, oh miso. Yeah, he's a very big miso fan. He puts miso in a lot of. Well, lot of and because he's all about whole whole foods, like he doesn't say use lemon juice. He says peel a lemon and like grind up the whole lemon. Um, I'm not quite that fanatical about it. When he when his recipes say you know ground up lemon, I'm like yeah lemon juice is fine. <laughs> um, so I I'm not quite as obsessed about using the whole food as he is, but. That his, I do like his, his um, recipe book, his cookbook, and I do find it to be pretty easy to use. Um, I'm going to be making bean, bean burgers to take to Russ's mother's this weekend, yes. so hopefully she likes it, fingers crossed. Yes, she will, I'm sure. So, yeah, that's what we have going on. Um, one I wanted to share with you, and like I said, next week I'm going to look at breast cancer and, um, and see what I can find. And if, if I can find that breast, I can do breast cancer and maybe other female reproductive organs all at one time, maybe I'll try and do them all at once. Okay. See if they're similar. Um, if you have not <laughs> seen our webinar, uh, how, how to Feed a Human, I absolutely recommend that you go to howtofeedahuman.com and watch our webinar. We have an amazing master class on the back of it that has a ton of information in right. it that I think you'll find super well, valuable. And it gives them the information to not only make their life healthier, but their family's life. Uh, if you're a, an older adult and you have grandchildren, you know, you can start teaching grandchildren how to eat better by eating better when they're, at your, when they're in your care and your you know, they're yeah. visiting you. Because as we've told you, you learn, to, you learn what you like um, as a child. And then if you teach your, your children and grandchildren that when they're young, they don't have to relearn it when they're right. older. And we've had people tell us that, that, they, that their grandchildren come eat at their house. They eat um, similar to how we eat. And then they go home and they want the same thing. So they're learning, which I think is a fantastic thing. Because yeah. that's the generation we got to work on. That's true. You know? That's true. So, yeah, howtofeedahuman.com. You can go there. And then if you want to be want access to us directly, you can go to rnrjourney.com. That's our business website. And you can become a member there, and that gives you access to the community page where you can ask specific questions about your situation, and I will, I will respond to you individually on there. So if you want individual kind of help without having to hire me individually one-on-one, -on -one, the, the um, community page on our website is a really good resource for that. Right. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can like, follow, and all that stuff there. And if you're getting value out of these, I do ask you to please like and share them. It's how I know that, hey, I'm doing something useful, we're making a difference, and we get to tell, you know, get to reach other people. So 
other people get to be healthy too. You know, maybe we'll, we'll fix the healthcare system one human at a time by We're making us all it. healthy. We're working on it. So did I tell them everything now? You did. All right. I did a good job. All right, guys. You guys have a great weekend. It's we Friday. Look forward, it is Friday. We look forward to seeing you on Monday. I hope you have fun. And, um, yeah. That's it. I guess that's all. That's tell a them wrap. goodbye, Gracie. All right. Bye, Gracie. I don't know where you are, but, you know, I'll see you later. <laughs> uh, with that, we will say eat real food. Mostly, Mostly plants. plants. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.